Everything's fine? Yeah. So maybe I need the first view graph up. I'd like to thank the organizer to invite me to have this talk about the Rydberg matter. And this is the, the last slide. <laughs> <laughs> so OK, now we're here. I'd like to start with this uh, view graph from 2013. And that's the reason why I'm here at 2018, because I had the hunch to go to this conference. And, and uh, be and hold, I'm still here. But I was not in Rome. And the reason why I kept coming here is that uh, it's more interesting to be in this field than in my former field, which is hydrogen storage. It's more fun. It's more broad physics, uh, less chemistry, and uh, maybe fewer people now, but I think that would change. Anyway, um, when I had to decide what uh, to do, um, there was this problem, should I go to the liquid phase or gas phase or anything? And the answer was easy. Of course, I never touched a liquid before in my life, so I had to go to gas. And uh, I saw this guy when I was looking and, and, and studying in the literature. And the reason why he is so interesting is that uh, he was publishing papers with a very short distance between protons. Because the obvious answer is actually that uh, if you have short distance between protons, something should be going on. And I saw that he was alone in his field, so I decided to contact him and, and, and start cooperating with him. And I hope to be able to present something about the Rydberg matter and what is going on. But before I have to present this guy, Leif, he should be here, but he is in such a bad health that he has really not been able to travel for 10 years. And, uh, also, he had a recent stroke, so he's, say, out of any ability to work in this field now. But anyway, he was graduated in, in, in 1973 and has published 240 papers in surface science, and mainly about uh, alkaline atoms and how they interact with surface, how they behave, and how you can, say, to bring them out of the surface and, and, and study them. So he was uh, the first guy who confirmed the existence of, of Rydberg matter of, of potassium. And uh, as you see, this list is, you probably cannot read it, but I can tell you that the, he knows everything about how to bring atom in an excited state from a surface and something happens after that. But before I continue, I just want to show this picture here because I wanted to see what 2.3 picometers means, really. Is it possible to get a cold fusion out of that distance? And of course, this is the hard way to do it with hot fusion. Everything is going very slowly. I'm burning more power in my brain now than the sun in the, in the same volume. So I'm the sun in this room today. And. Uh, then the easy answer, if you have a muon, where the muon can bind these protons to a much shorter distance of, say, roughly 0.5 picometers, then you have a means to, say, bring these protons together and everything's over in, in, in nanoseconds. So if muon would be uh, available, we would not be sitting here, I think. We would be having everything done in by muon. Anyway, muon lives for a short time and it can mostly maybe catalyze 100 reactions. That's the recent estimate. And uh, so back then in 2014, I wanted to see if, if there was a possibility of fusion in uh, having a distance of 2.3 picometer. And, and the short answer is I didn't find any answer. So I had to calculate it myself. And here's the answer. You see that the, 
this is the muon catalyzed fusion and the simple calculation gives me that 2.3 picometers with the same binding energy as a muon would give you 100 kilowatts per mole. But this is a very rough calculation. But it was enough for me to decide to jump on the Edberg matter uh, track. So I hope to start to say what Rydberg matter is. And uh, I think I went too far here. This is a Rydberg state of, say, any atom. Because you can take any atom and bring out the first electron out. And you can easily see that uh, you start to excite it to, say, n equal to 5. And then you start to excite L and then M. And this uh, atom state starts to become, go from spherical to something more like a longitudinal, and then finally it's a circle. And I just want to show that because uh, you can then ask a question, how can we bring such two states together in experimental sense? And it's impossible in gas phase. And there's a paper here by Leif about that. You have to use a surface, and if you can bring more than two, uh, there's a theory paper here which calculates that the bonding between one such entity and so many is about 0.2 EV. But still, it's an excited state compared to H2. So this is an extremely delicate phase, metastable. And uh, you can look on uh, the cousin of this uh, physics, and that is Bose-Einstein condition, where you have, a, say, cold rubidium, magnetic optical traps and lasers going this way or that way, where you can finally make a, a Bose-Einstein condition and even bring some laser and make an optical lattice. And this is a very active field today. But here we have a different thing. The density is much higher and uh, you can see these numbers, they look a thousand or more, much more higher. And you can go further and look at what maybe there are random phases possible, and, but these are very hard phases to study. But uh, Leif has been the sole expert in that field, and it's very little written about these states in the literature. And you can see that uh, in a s structure like this, the electron is not sitting in a spherical state here anymore. It's actually in a state like here. It's in a pocket in B team. So you can have a readback state here. And it's a huge structure. This is no, no, near the 2.3 picometer I'm talking about. It's uh, 159 picometer here, so it's a very open structure. But Leif does something and it transforms to a new state, which he calls ultra dense hydrogen. And uh, just to remind you the role of the surface, here you have uh, this catalyzer here, which is just a standard iron oxide, and it's doped with uh, potassium. What you need to do is actually, our role of the potassium is to bring free electrons on the surface. Because for the Rydberg state to be the lowest energy state, you need the interaction to the surface under. If you don't have the surface, this state will never form. And uh, there's very little known about this, but it, we can say generally that this uh, electron cloud here from the potassium is the main reason why a state a circular state like here is in lower energy than a normal, say, uh, one state here, bounded hard to the metal here. So when you stream a gas in this here catalyst, which is, has a lot of nanocase, this here matter is flowing out. And Leif has studied this very much by taking a laser, and he shoots the laser here, and he measures how these uh, clusters are falling apart and measures time of flight with it. So time of flight is an e easy experiment because you excite the electron structure of the cluster. So in a sense, 
this screening or what is holding these two uh, together is, is in, in a different state, so you have a chart which fly apart, and you can easily measure the initial distance is related to how close they are. So by measuring the time of flight and equated to the kinetic energy it rep represents, you say that the initial distance is close to the flying time squared. So shorter the flying time, the closer these entities are. And you can find a huge number of publications where he has done this for potassium initially, and then he later graduated to hydrogen. And uh, here you see that the flight time is, is different here. Here is in 10, 20, 30 microseconds, and here it's in, in 1, 2, 3 microseconds. And uh, he sees lots of peaks here. And uh, using this method, and here we are in the re region of normal Rydberg matter, where everything is known, and here are certainly a new physics does to bring up. And nobody has replicated these peaks, because nobody has tried it, actually. And uh, by moving the laser up and down, you see that the, uh, the effect of these peaks vanish as you go further away. So if this is some kind of artifact of, of laser doing something, uh, I think that this would be not visible that this disappears with, with distance. Anyway, he made a lot of different measurements, and, and, and it looks like a real effect. And here we come to this Boson distance. And what kind of structure is in this, structure, in this cluster? Nobody knows. But Leif has indicated that the, uh, some structure in his papers. But then he has called this ultra-dense hydrogen, which is maybe a misnomer, because he's not measuring this in three dimensions. And this distance uh, means actually the same as neutron density, which is, of course, uh, unbelievable. But experimentally, he has only measured this in one distance. So it can be much more open structure. And then we come to the later part of his work, uh, I want to show you that this time here, there's always a very fast pulse here. You, don't, you just barely see it. And he wanted to study that. So he made a new experiment where he put a longer flight, time of flight tubes. And then he could see that the, the, dist uh, the, the speed of the, this signal he started to see. And actually, that brings us to relativistic speeds of particles. And he has published some papers where he hints that these uh, particles are actually decaying to their lower energy states, in a sense that uh, this is uh, protons. And the laser pulse goes into this uh, ultra-high dense structure and does the impossible thing that, that the proton is, is, is decaying into it's uh, more uh, lower energy state. You know that the proton and the electron is the only stable particles in our life. And proton has no means to decay since uh, the quantum numbers are not fulfilled. But in a large molecular structure, this is possible. And uh, here we list some things which uh, Sindri will talk later about, where he had tried to replicate what he has seen. And then there we can do further experiments and see if, if we are really seeing that uh, this uh, structure is disintegrating into something. And then we have a poster here later where, he, where we, we found the only theoretical outway, if this is true. And, and you can have a look on the, that. Uh, poster, and, and Sindri will also talk about it a little bit, that actually the quantum numbers are fulfilled if you take group of three, six, or nine protons, and, and you annihilate. They can annihilate into antileptons. That's the only thing when everything is conserved. Energy and quantum numbers. So 
we don't know what at the moment. So I have 15 minutes left, is it? Yeah. So then I will bring us to what I originally did in Iceland in, in after contacting Leif, that was in 2014. And uh, I didn't want to replicate his work. So I decided to do what uh, I normally do, and uh, that is in hydrogen stories, we look on, on the thermodynamics of thin films using conductivity measurements. So I wait, made a very similar setup using that here. So in Iceland, we have a quite nice lab. We can grow any film we want. We can uh, characterize it, and we can use our lithography system to do anything stuff we like. And this is the first chamber we made. And, uh, and now, in 2018, we actually have five different cells. So we can all in, say, initial uh, final states of getting used in experiments. And you see that uh, we are using this. Here's a replication of, of Leif, a recent one. Same is, is in, in Oslo, the Cindy lab. And then we have a vibration stress cell here. And then we have a very low pressure cell here, 10 to minus 10. And uh, this is a small lab. That's what you need. And, um, but this is some, some information about 2015 measurements we made. And uh, here you see the experiment. Here is uh, platinum on MGO. Uh, by platinum, it's because it doesn't uh, absorb any hydrogen at room temperature. And uh, so any Rydberg matter phase should not be disturbed by hydrogen coming from down. That was the main idea. And uh, then we have four point measurements. And here's a thermocouple. And, and then we have a heater here which we can heat it up to, say, 200 degrees. And uh, for half a year, we didn't see anything. We were just mainly trying to uh, develop the system. It had to pro pro be programmed, and I was the only one who was doing that at the moment. And uh, here you see the vacuum system. Uh, we can put, uh, by chance, we put it the bottle here, and that was a good chance to do that because it's much more easy to control the pressure in this chamber, putting it behind the, or in front of the turbo, because uh, what you can do that is that you fill the roughing pump to 10 to minus 3, and you fill the chamber with 10 to minus 8 of hydrogen. So it's much easier than putting the bottle in here on this side. And uh, this is what we saw. And this is, as you see, uh, since this is a very low pressure measurement, it's uh, quite different from everything you have seen. It's actually that you are seeing a very tiny system compared to having a, a lot of material. So everything is happening from the catalyst. You see the catalysts here. So you can just fill the gas, and you take it back immediately. And here you see you fill the gas and take it back. And here you see that the normal resistivity of the platinum film is 11.5 ohms. And suddenly, the resistance drops something down. And then you see this oscillation between gas pressure and resistivity. I think you saw it in. in in last in the last days in from result from Japan, you saw the same thing, and uh, then you see this strange thing going on in the thermocouple. It's both cooling and heating. So, and this is a KT type thermocouple, so. I think you, you can think that uh, if you want to keep the temperature constant, don't put it into the gas. That is the result of this. 
it can hardly be cooling, is it? Anyway, we get it that the resistivity jumps down, and at that time, uh, it's like the Rydberg matter is, ect is, uh, is ejecting some, something hot out from the surface. And when that stops, uh, you get a normal resistivity again and then oscillation. So it's a kind of a Rydberg matter oscillation going on. From and uh, you have to imagine that uh, you have a current pass like this going on in the Rydberg matter. You would think, because there's a little bit more story. It looks like something is going in quantized stages. So we were looking more like a Bose-Einstein condensation or something like that. But, and here we come to the, this here picture here, because we did this content for about a month, and it was gradually decreasing in activity. This is a very long measurement here, but something happened here and it stopped. And we've never seen it before after that. But this is the same day that this eruption stopped. So now I might be fooling you, giving you this strange link, or that uh, the experiment is actually harder than they think. Yeah. So with these words, I thank you for listening. Amen. Thank, you. thank you very much. And uh, the question. Oh, very nice uh, discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I mentioned in my paper yesterday about our uh, condensation into defects forming uh, what we're calling clusters of very dense hydrogen or deuterium. And uh, we, we reported squid measurements that showed that those clusters could be superconducting mm -hmm. at uh, around 70K or something. Uh, have similar measurements been done for the Ryberg states? Uh, no, no, but uh, it didn't show it here, but actually uh, for one small time the resistivity went much further down. So less than one ohm. I see. Yeah. So what's, what's the, how long has that happened? Uh, 20 what? seconds or something like that. Mm. Amazing. Mm. Next one, please. Uh, <clears throat> I have a, a comment and a question. Hmm. So first, a comment that uh, when thermocouple is not shielded, then it's also an antenna, a very sensitive antenna. Yeah. So these uh, fast oscillations, they might be also electromagnetic emissions. It's yes, but important. these, uh, these uh, the transitions that take seconds. So, so it's oh. a very slow recorder. It's maybe taking t two measurements per second. Oh, oh I see. Yeah. And, uh, but you're right, actually, if you have conductivity on the top of the surface, you can actually have conductivity down to the thermocouple head. So that could be the reason for this also. Yes. Yes, and, and then the question that, uh, could you please uh, explain again how this 2.3 picometers distance was measured? Because that was not uh, quite clear to me uh, how that was concluded. It's this time of flight. It's about two microseconds. But, so the time of flight of, of what? That was not of, clear. Of this distance? From this distance to this distance? It's flying 10 centimeters in two microseconds. And then you do this calculation here. And you will come up with uh, 630 EV kinetic energy to fly at this, this distance. And uh, that makes... Uh, this distance initial distance has to be 2.3 picometers. So it's just this uh, time which stands here which tells you how much energy was released when the two clusters were flying apart. Thank you. Uh, when you're talking about this structure, you're building it on a planar surface. Hmm. What do you expect if you have a, a non-planar surface? How do you think these are going to interact? 
Yes, uh, Leif has in his paper reported also about the three, four, oh no, four and six uh, type of, of clusters. So then they are not planar. And, and they are also, so he hasn't ruled out that they might be also spherical or, or, or different forms than, than these quite simple here. I propose here. So, but that has, does that still depend upon the substrate that you're putting them on? Or? Yeah, but th that could be more like, a, 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 because there's a first stage. First, first you have to make the Rydberg matter. Okay. And after that, uh, uh, if you form, say, this uh, 2.3 picometer, that can grow later than just eating Rydberg matter. So the, the Rydberg matter is still a planar structure? Or uh, yeah, it yeah. But it, but it could be the feeder to the, this 2.3. It could curl and do yeah. other things as well. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Hold on. Uh, maybe, maybe just uh, a funny question, okay? Uh, in your last uh, slide, mm. uh, you shown that uh, was a correlation between uh, earthquake or uh, vulcan emission. Yeah. And uh, so maybe uh, uh, we, what, well, yeah, last one. Sorry. Okay, stop. Uh, Statistically, uh, the LEARN field yeah. grow very much in Japan, Italy, mm. and both are uh, vulcan area, mm. so, or earthquake. Mm. Can be some specific emission or radiation I think, to stimulate mm. the events? Maybe, or background event, and then just a joke, okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are there any, any questions? Uh, this is my volcanic remote. I could start in Iceland now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh.